Furious Driving, presented by Diamond Bright, keeping the Furious fleet shining, and you can protect, clean and care for your car with 10% off site-wide using code FD10. And Bidding Classics, the online marketplace for appreciating classic cars, where you can find our featured Escort Mexico. And like Dumb and Bright, Lancaster Insurance Services is a company I've been a happy customer of for quite some time. Lancaster are one of the biggest specialist insurers in the UK, covering all areas of vintage to modern classic car and motorbike. So give them a call and see if you can save on your cover. Follow the links in the description below. The fear is driving in today. I'm in the driveway with Hippo the Freelander, a car which I've been ignoring a little bit for the last couple of weeks because last time I took it out when it was snowing quite incredibly before Christmas, it was making a really horrible grindy noise, which kind of put me off driving it a little bit. And I did drive it a little bit further, hoping it would go away, but it didn't. And of course, we've been playing with the Mondeo, playing with the Mini, ignoring the Freelander because the weather got better. And then of course, the MOT ran out. If only I knew someone who sold calendars or I could have made a note of that. Mm. Link in the description below for your driving calendars. Right, anyway, so today we've got to do a couple of things to get this thing ready for its MOT. First of all, got to figure out what's grinding because it does not sound healthy at all. I'm guessing either a wheel bearing or brakes and it kind of sounds like it's this front corner but we'll jack them all up and have a listen secondly it is failing to start every time now having to jump start it off the crown vic and it's taking a lot of effort even jumping off that which means that battery that's in there is toast utterly janked and finally in the bottom of well, the front of my garage at the moment is this huge panel of freelander which i took off when i was doing the gearbox and didn't put it on because i wanted to go and find all the correct nice fittings and clean it all up but never got around to it, so I'm going to put it back on again because it is very much in the way. But first of all, let's figure out why it sounds so horrible. I was down at oh, Lidl or Aldi, I genuinely don't know the difference between the two. Um, they had in their parkside section, that I'll identify, these alloy wheel sort of nylon protected sockets for doing your wheels. So only about six pounds or something, so couldn't really say no to that, except of course they don't have one that fits the Freelander. Brilliant. Great purchase. Well done me. So that was a nice idea. I've gone back to the Draper um, Deep Impact set. It's a 20 millimeter on this car. Now, when I changed the drop links on this car a year ago when I got it, it, um, well, it didn't really seem to have anything wrong looking with the brakes. It looked fairly good, decent. Okay, so now the car is in neutral. Um, I've got both sides chocked up, so what can I feel or hear when I do this? That side sounds absolutely fine. Nothing to worry about there, apart from the fact that all the underseal is falling off. Yeah, that, <laughs> that needs looking at quite urgently. So this is the passenger side wheel, which I kind of felt that the problem might be with. Mm. It sounds a little bit less happy. Not the end of the world unhappy though. Only small ridge on the brake disc. Mm, I'll take them off, have a look at the brakes, but it doesn't sound like that's the problem there. Okie dokie, so looking for any signs of what's making a noise, the outer pad has got tons and tons of meat on it. No big scratches or grooves, not too big of a lip on there, so all good. Over to the passenger side. And it's a similar story, really big, loads of meat on that, that pad, doesn't look like it was that old when I bought the car a year ago. Bigger lip on this disc this side though, um, a bit more rusty, and also we've got a, um, a, a stone guard, a mess guard on the back of this, so I can't even see the back side of this disc, which is interesting. But the CV boots are nice and dry, that's not an issue. Mm, that one's that one's a little bit weepy. I wonder if that is what's causing the problem. Oh, hang on. I just had a proke at the uh, the Jubilee clip type thing, and that is actually split in half. So that might be an issue. It's probably definitely going to be a fail. Um, if, I a big, if I could find a big enough Jubilee clip and then clean this up, that wouldn't be too much of a problem in terms of passing the MOT, so I need to get that one sorted out. It is a Sunday afternoon right now, so I'm not going to be able to find one immediately. But yeah, we'll look at that one though. But I've not heard anything that sounds like the grinding I'm hearing when the car's in motion though. Right, putting the wheels back on again, and now I'm hearing it. There we go, we got the noise there. 
often that's drowned out by the tires being so sort of chunky and everything but that is the noise i've been hearing oh, i so. noticed that uh, the um very rusty and quite crispy um brake dust shield thing had made contact with the disc and that's simply what was making the noise so i'm hoping this might actually be a really simple problem if that's the problem we've got a really easy fix just here seems like it's just bits of rust falling out of that dust shield into the brake disc and sounding just horrible rather than the entire gearbox failing and the half shaft grinding itself out and the discs being about to implode so hopefully that was a free fix which is good because i still need to go and buy a battery which is going to cost about fifteen thousand pounds <laughs> no it's about 120 pounds i've left all the nuts and bolts for this under tray up at the barn so i can't do anything about that today and i have no idea where i'm going to find a jubilee clip thingamajig to fit around that jupe that um that boot at least i haven't got to set the boot off in order to do it i can just feed the, the jubilee clip around and tighten it up which is one thing we can be thankful for cool so one easy fix later we can put the tools away having done literally nothing apart from look at it okay ready for a test drive up the drive and i'm wondering what the chances of this thing starting without a jump pack are i'm reckoning low oh okay so well, let's see if this thing will trundle up the drive and make a noise it does make a sound not deadly though like it was before I mean, it was sounding really terrible. I can't take it for a test drive now because um, it's got no MOT, so I can't take it around the block to just test it, only up and down the short section of drive. Okay, I'm going to go with the assumption that it was merely that, uh, that one little tiny thing, which was... It's not crashing to the Mondeo. I was meant to be doing the Mondeo today. Well, I've got the Mondeo headlining booked for a couple of days into the week. Um, a friend has got a big heated double garage where we can take the headlining out and get that sorted out. Um, unfortunately, he's got a freshly painted unassembled classic which he wants to not get wet or indeed snowy as an air forecasting. Um, and we're going to go do that on Tuesday. So I was going to do the Mondeo today on my own, but then the forecast is too tight to get into this bit. But then the forecast, well, sorry, but then the weather really turned cold. And so I don't want to be attacking brittle old 25 year old plastic because that would just shatter like it did on the Volvo, which would be no fun at all. And it's pretty much unobtainium. Let's put that window down. There we go. There's a mirror then. So, I'm not going to have to open the door with that mirror just there. That'll do. Yeah, so, I didn't go and do that because I thought I'd want to damage the roof. But now I'm a bit worried because that car is now going on Thursday. Well, that's the plan anyway, see if I can get the headlining done. So I set off to go and do this, which I've now achieved very little on. That's still, yeah, automatics always lurch. Um, yes, yeah, so that's a funny old world. Funny old world, as they say. I'm not sure where I was going with this. I've got distracted by the parking. Oh, yeah, so I've not done the Mondeo. The Mondeo is booked to do on Tuesday for the headlining, although I'm now worried that because of the weather, we're not going to be able to get it done. That's the point of this. This is now one step closer to an MOT, but it does need a new battery. Well, then maybe I can get away with it, because I'll, I'll put it on charge again tonight and drive it straight around to the MOT. I might get away with it. And maybe the garage might even have a universal boot um, jubilee clip in a box and they can just whack it on there as part of or when they, before they do the MOT once it's on the ramp and that'll just save me the bother of jacking it up again it'll be much easier on a lift anyway right, I'll turn this thing off now put it on charge make some phone calls in the morning right so Hippo is back from the MOT. Now I'm not saying you have to be pathologically optimistic to submit a Freelander or any Land Rover project over say three years old for an MOT and hope it's going to pass without any issues whatsoever but I'm not putting this out as a thing you should do but perhaps it is easier to just trawl local car parks and find a similar looking car and switch the number plates rather than try and put yourself through the misery. However 
Although I was fully prepared for any number of massive failures on this car because it is a 20 odd year old Freelander, the one that got me was a real surprise. Because I thought maybe brakes were going to be an issue, binding brakes, I'm always making that grinding noise, wheel bearings, uh, CV boots, we know there's a CV boot we've asked the garage to repair, um, what else could it have been? Oh anything electrical, handbrake probably, but no the one that got me was rust and not where I thought it was going to be. You see I had noticed when I was washing the car a while ago there's a little bit of, well there's a dent just here and there's some spots of rust around here somewhere just, you know, just through the paint kind of thing. And I knew that that means I've got to have a, an attack of this sill area at some point in the new year, ideally when it's not frosty outside and I can paint on under seal and it's gonna dry rather than freeze off. However, what got me wasn't this area here, which I thought was a suspicious place. What got me was here, where the man saw a paint bubble, this paint bubble in fact, put his finger through it. So that was um, something of a shock, which means I've got to get all this stuff off, grind it back and put a little plate over that. So then we can resubmit it for the retest, hopefully get that done this morning, which all things considered could have been a lot worse. Incidentally, the grinding noise, which I thought was hopefully going to be that um, brake shield, which is missing on this side, is still there. So I think it's either going to be the drum brakes doing something nasty at the back not affecting their performance when the car's on the road and on the rollers, otherwise it would have failed on that. So clearly it works, but something's not right there. Or the rear differential, which is the only part of the four wheel drive and transmission system that hasn't been changed or worked on. So while I'm here talking about whatever else this thing failed on on the MOT, wasn't actually that long of a list. Uh, I already mentioned the a little bit of rust and the CV boot clip, which we knew about already. Uh, the front shock absorbers, uh, he said had a misting of oil, so we're going to have to do new shocks on that. It does sound like an excuse to do a lift kit if you ask me. And this rear tyre, he said was starting to perish, it's an advisory, so the, the shocks in this tyre are advisories rather than failures. Um, yeah, you can see a little bit of cracking just in that, but the mileage this car does, that'll be okay for a little while longer. Immense tread still, but then it must have been about that deep when it started. Oh yeah, and that was the other advisory, the um, fuel tank uh, hanger, hanger cradle if you like is clearly corroded it's still doing its job because big metal bar in the middle is there but the um the panel that kind of protects it is uh, returning to the earth so again another excuse for some fancy off-roading gear there every cloud is a silver lining or something so yeah nothing really too serious to worry about right uh, it's, uh, this area always fills with crud and you gotta get this strip off as well how does that come off which is a great idea for protecting the, the, uh, the pinch world, but it is also a bad idea because it fills with rubbish. But the good thing about the Freelander is you don't have to jack it up. Oh, yuck, it is, yeah, full of mud. And as far as I can tell, it is literally just clipped in place. Yeah, kind of hard to see because it's all black and it's been undercoated, but there's a fixing just there. And there'll be other ones further forward, I guess. Oh, yuck, that is full of an awful lot of rubbish. And this front clip kind of destroyed itself. Oh, man, alive. That is, yeah, definitely a rust strap. A lot of gunk fell out of there. Oh, We've got a lot of crusty metal down here. Damn. That is actually really bad. Oh, dear. So I'm a quick 10p size hole has turned into the entire bottom floor of the car. Oh God, look at that. Did I just put, oh. Oh no, it's meant to be there, that's a, uh, oh no it's not, no it's not. Oh, brilliant, so that, bit of plastic has basically condemned the car. Oh no. That's terrible. Oh no, that's coming off as well. Okay, so the back of it, where the actual hole is, is nice and solid. Just a bit muddy. The front of it is basically not there. Oh, I'm not happy with that. 
Okay, so let's try again with a different tool. <clears throat> Maybe I will have to jack this thing up at some point. I'm not sure I trust it on a jack anymore. <laughs> but you can see this whole area here is kind of crimped away and compressed, which suggests the entire section along here is compromised. to jack it up. Maybe I will have to jack this thing up at some point. I'm not sure I trust it on a jack anymore. <laughs> but you can see this whole area here is kind of crimped away and compressed, which suggests the entire section along here is compromised. I've taken a lot of grind back. Still more to go, but it appears that this bottom section has completely gone. Uh, I thought it was a rust hole. It was actually a screw hole. Oh, the mounting hole for the plastic trim, which caused all of this. Um, that looks more solid down there. This whole area is knackered. I guess that was initially just a pressing hole in the side which has gone completely around it. I've not ground this area off here yet, but you can see this whole bottom corner is completely gone. I wonder if you can buy a sill section for these cars. That doesn't look too clever over there either, frankly. There's only surface at the moment, but it's still not looking brilliant. Now this, I think, is where I initially saw a problem. These little bubbles just here, when I was washing it a, little while, a couple of weeks ago, and I thought, oh, that's going to want something to look at very soon. But hoped it would be after the winter, and definitely hoped it wouldn't be that bad. <coughs> yeah, there you go. That's kind of what I expected to find. And that was the extent of what I expected to find as well, not the crust fest that lives in there. Oh. Okay, so this is now the extent of the rot in this car. I mean, it's not as bad as the Alpha 145 was. That was the entire length of the thing in roughly the same kind of place. But it is pretty horrific, and it's certainly not going to be something I'm going to be doing this morning. So I, t I don't think I'm going to get my free MOT done um, this weekend. Um, this is going to roll into paying for a second MOT and extending the expense of this particular test. Oops. And this here is the, or it should be the drain hole, I think. That strengthened part just there. This is actually quite thick steel. I'm not quite sure what gauge it is, but it's certainly thicker than what I've got in the garage. So I need to go and buy some more thicker metal to heavier gauge for this. And don't forget, this is chassis and it's off-roading chassis, so it's designed to be pretty tough. This is, once again, this is a situation where anyone else just would condemn the car. But because this is me, we, we can fix this. It's just not something I wanted to be doing today and something I haven't got the stuff in to do today either. Bad news all round. Looking at this here, it looks like 
<laughs> this must be thin this entire length down here for it to have folded like this when the car was jacked. Thank you Land Rover for putting a nice rust strap on there. Now my only other question is of course when I take that side's plastic trim off to have a look what am I going to find over there? Or is the best solution just to not take that plastic trim off? Ugh, you know when you realise that you've got to fix a car with a broom rather than a welder you know things are going badly. So this is clearly a much bigger problem than we thought it was going to be. Forget the free retest in a day or two's time because I didn't pick the car up until after like three or four days after it had been tested. Just didn't have time to go and get it. What we've got now is a serious issue with a couple of days worth of welding with some heavy duty steel which I haven't got in the garage. So <sighs> when I first saw it, <laughs> you have that first initial oh god moment when you see that kind of thing and as my wife just said well i've rescued the mercedes why can't i rescue this which is a fair point we all like hippo hippo's a lovely car and we've got the roof tent for it as well we want it back up and running again for spring um because my initial dark thoughts were oh let's just bin this one off sell it for scrap go and get a discovery but <sighs> that would be a lot of wastage in the car it's a really nice car in every other respect it's perfect what we want so Next week sometime, hopefully, I'll be able to go and get some heavier gauge steel. So next week, when the shops are open again, I'll go and find some heavier gauge steel, or I'll see if you can go and buy an actual repair panel for that X section down there, because I'm pretty sure that's gonna be a common fault, because that plastic trim is so stupid. Yeah, sure, it looks nice, but clearly it would doom most of the cars that this has happened to. So this has not been the video I wanted to make today, but oh well. It's happened, so we'll deal with it. Anyway, join me again next time when, I don't know, if I'm feeling brave, I'll start welding that. If not, I'll go and play with something else. Poor hippo.